Good morning, viewers, subscribers, Kingdom Saints. How's everybody doing this morning? I know a lot of y'all sleeping right now, but you'll see this when you wake up. You know what I'm saying? I'm just up. I wake up at three. Once I once I wake up at three, I'm up. That's it. So uh, anyway, welcome. I want to share a story with y'all. Okay. One morning, when actually it was afternoon. One afternoon, it was like a 90, de 90 degree 90 degree day. There was no wind at all. No wind. It was like humid. It was like a day in Mexico. It was real humid and sweaty and hot day. So I went out on my porch. And let me tell you a little about a little bit about before that day. Before that day. I lived the life of uh Turbulent. I had a turbulent lifestyle, so. I was doing things contrary to scriptures. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't even know nothing about Jesus. And I didn't even want to be affiliated, even though I was affiliated, but I didn't want to be affiliated with Jesus. So I lived a life, a hard life. I was raised up early to be a man when I was 11 or 12. I was raised up early to be a man because I had to do for self because I left home. You know what I'm saying? I left home and I was raised on the streets, but uh, God has been looking after me, you know, even when I didn't know him. So anyway, I came to the point where I lost everything. I lost everything when I was 48 years old. I was, I thought I was on top of the world and then everything was, came down, including me, it came down. So, okay, on now, one afternoon on that day that I just mentioned, I came out of the house. When I was 48 years old, I came out of the house and I said, well, what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna go out and but I was tired of my lifestyle. I was so tired of living the life I was living. I was so tired. Believe me, I was tired of looking behind me to see if any of my enemies was following me. I was tired of the women, the women that were using me that would tell me lies, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I love you. Yeah, as long as I had money. Feel me? As long as I had money. That wasn't true love. And even though I had everything just about, it was still something missing in me, corazón. It was something missing in my heart. My heart felt empty. Sure. I could call up a few friends. We can go out and have fun. We can go all across the world or whatever. We can go to the Bahamas. We can go to Mexico. We can go have fun anywhere. We can go to Six Flags. Uh, I can call a chick up and say, hey, baby, come on over. You know what I'm saying? And that was nothing. I had bling bling, nice clothes. You know what I'm saying? That meant nothing. I had a nice car, I had a nice house. But I still felt that something was missing in my life. The world wasn't doing anything for me. But it was pulling me deeper and deeper and deeper into the abyss. In other words, my eyes was closed. I was blind as in without spiritual sight. 
and I was weak as in without spiritual might. So I was on the I was on the porch. Had to be like one o'clock. And I was set out to go and do something that I really, really didn't want to do. Really didn't want to do it. So I said, Lord. And this is the first time I ever said, Lord. And the first time I ever said, Jesus. And the first time that Jesus even came into my mind to ask for him. I said, Lord. Jesus, Lord, I need a new life. I, I want to out of this. I don't want to live like this anymore. Set me free from everything I'm going through and everything I'm facing right now, Lord. And the next thing I know, I felt the wind. And like I said earlier, there was no wind that day. There was no wind. It was like hot and humid. I felt the wind. It was like, and it wasn't like over there. It was like circling around me. And the hairs on my arms was pricked up. I'm like, what is this? What is this? What's going on? Then I heard a voice. Then I knew it was God. Because it wasn't my usual voice. Because we all have voices. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't my usual voice telling me to do this or do that or, or whatnot. Leading me into deception or sin. It was God. And that voice said, walk. Mm. Hallelujah. That voice said, walk. So I walked and I walked and I, I didn't know where I was going, but the Lord was guiding my steps. Feel me? And when I got a few blocks down the street from my house, there was a park right there. And that's when I heard God's voice said, stop. So I stopped and I'm right in front of the park. I'm looking at the benches. I'm looking at the scenery. And I said, Lord God, is this where you wanted me to go? You want me to sit on the bench and pray to you? The Lord said, turn around. So I did a 180. And this is why I know it was God because he told me to do it, to turn around. I did a 180. He wanted me to do a 180 from the world. Not a 360. You know, when you turn around and go back to where you've been, where you came from. He told me to turn around. I turned around and did a 180. And lo and behold, little did I know that there was a church right near where I lived at. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. And he said, go to that church. This was a Saturday, mind you. So I went to that church the next morning. I looked them up on the internet and find out what time the services was. I went to that church I loved it so much, the mighty, mighty Gethsemane. I went to that church. I felt the Holy Spirit the first time I went up in there. I felt the Holy Spirit, and I knew that Jesus was alive, that Jesus is real, that Jesus is Lord of all lords, King of all kings, the King of kings. And I became a member of that church. I got baptized at that church. I became a tribe member of that church. Naptali. Peace out to all my Naptali tribe members at that ceremony. Eh? So, uh, yeah. Um, man. Ever since that day, my life changed. My life changed. My gang put a green light out on me. 
After I joined that church, my gang put a green light all on me, and they was looking for me. I'm going to tell you about that, too. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to get to that. Be patient, okay? They put a green light on me. But, uh, oh, man, I felt the transformation after I got baptized. I felt the transformation. I, I, I was speaking in tongues and everything. I'm like, oh, man, why didn't I do this sooner? Hmm? But you know, the Lord says it's never too late. It's never too late. So uh, I was going to this church. I was feeling the rejuvenation and the rejoicing. and I got the transformation. And I no longer was doing the things I used to do. I was studying more and learning more about God and learning more about Jesus and reading the Bible. I was sipping the milk. You know, when you're baby Christian and you first reading the Bible for the first time and you open the scriptures and you're sipping the milk just like I'm sipping this coffee mmm delicious coffee yeah I was sipping the milk and I was sipping the milk and sipping the milk for uh, maybe a year then I started eating the meat um, um, <sighs> Nom, 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 nom. I was eating the meat. I became a a, 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 a a mature Christian, a warrior of the Lord. You know what I'm saying? I was in God's army. I was eating the meat. I didn't have to sip the milk no more. Now I eat the meat every day. No more milk. The only time I, I have milk is when I put cream in my coffee. Nah, 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 nah. But, um... Yeah, my uh, my old gang put a green light out on me. They wanted me dead. So they sent two gang members, enforcers. They put a green light on me. And two enforcers from, from my old gang. And I saw one of them when I was at the Hellos Bakery in Mount Pleasant. He was up the street. Looking for me, cause that's my old hood. That's why they they even knew where I was at my my old hood, cause that was my um my territory. And uh, I was like, okay, I'm think I'm just gonna leave that alone. So the other one came looking for me. He got locked up. The one that was going to get me, he got locked up. He came out of prison. And he came looking for me. I said, oh, he finally found me. He got me off guard. You know what I'm saying? Caught me off guard. I thought that was the, that was the end of my days. But he said, hey, I got locked up on a, on a, a drug charge, but I found Jesus in prison. And he said, oh, yeah? So I gave him a big hug, and, I, and it was, we, was, we was actually fellowshipping together. Imagine that. Fellowshipping with an ex-gang member, ex-enforcer. And, uh, and what makes it so ironic is this is the one they sent to kill me. See how God works. Oh, and the other one, he got murdered. He got murdered. But see how God works. God said, in, in his word, God said that he will let no one harm you. He will let no one come in between you and him. He will let no one do you no harm. He said, touch not my property. Touch not my anointed and do no harm to my prophets. But God is just, that God was God is just so awesome. God is just so awesome. So um I just had to share this story because it is so and you know what? I still think about it. I still think about it. I'm like, wow. I still think about it because it's it's like a 
it's like a testimony to the greatness of the Lord. And it's like a testimony on how anybody, anybody under my voice can be saved, changed, and transformed. And I'm going to be honest with you. Your sins can't even amount to the number of sins that I've I've done back back in my old when I was an old man. This new man in Christ has, has been changed. But that old man, I was doing everything under the sun. I have sinned so much and I got so tired of it. And I came to the end of myself and I was like, I needed a way out. And Jesus showed me the way in. And one thing that God does, he closes all that door, all those doors that no one can open. No man can open those doors except him. Once those doors are closed, that's it. God has the key. It's like, <laughs> Satan, <laughs> nice try there, buddy, there, boy, by there, boy, nice try. Yeah, I got this one. He's mine. She's mine. Amen. So yeah. So just just to let y'all know. People say, you know, people say God works in mysterious ways. He only works in mysterious ways to those who don't know him. Because he's not mysterious to me. His ways are not mysterious to wait to me. Because I know him and I know he is a good God. Hallelujah. He's a good God. Anyway, love you all. Don't forget to subscribe there, there, boy. And thanks for watching. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible to pray. Open your Bible today. Open your Bible to pray. Open it. Open it.